I've seen a lot of people say things like it doesn't matter if it's not Oxbridge and so on, but that's not entirely accurate. This misconception probably comes from the fact that the difference between those universities and all the other ones is just so big that those other differences feel negligible, but those differences are definitely still there. This video consists of two parts. The first one will be how I chose universities to apply to, and the second will be an, an evaluation of my choices and whether I think applying to them was worth it and how a few they stack up against my other choices. Initially, I did look at university rankings, but if you think about it, the tables change every year, but universities definitely don't change enough from year to year to double or half their rank. Not only that, but every person is different, so it's impossible to make a table which actually encapsulates everything, which is going to be correct for every person. Instead, you should try to listen to and evaluate as many opinions as possible and take them all with a grain of salt. And then once you've listened to all of them, make up your mind. I want you to treat this video the same. Don't just take my word for it. Research these universities and come to your own conclusion once you've evaluated all your options and all the opinions you've heard. I'll try to focus on the points which weren't mentioned when I was applying so you have a better and more complete idea of what's out there when it comes to choosing a university to apply to. I started off doing what seemed like the most obvious thing to do, Google what are the best universities for computer science in the UK. Almost any website you go on or thread you read there will be somebody saying that oh, work is the best university after Oxbridge, at least when it comes to computer science. There are definitely some things which point in that direction. For example, after five years, work has the best graduate salaries after Oxbridge and Imperial, according to the Wish University website, and a sizable proportion of the graduates go on to work at big companies like Google and Facebook and so on. This and the almost unanimous support for work made me put it down as one of my different choices before I did that for the other two. Later when my school began talking about universities and so on at assemblies, they mentioned contextual offers and where our school would be eligible for those. One of those was the University of Bristol, so I put it down as a sort of insurance before really thinking about it since it would give me a lower offer than any other top university. After that, for a while, I couldn't decide what to put down for my fifth choice, but that summer I became interested in working abroad at some point in my life, so I decided to make my fifth choice something that would be um, recognized abroad, and that basically narrowed down my choices to UCL and LSE. LSE doesn't do computer science, so that made UCL my fifth choice. Mind you, this was still months before we had to send off our university applications, but even after a lot more research, my choices didn't change. However, the reasons to keep them did. Out of those three, I ranked UCL at the top, Bristol somewhere in the middle, and work last. Here is a summary of the pros and cons which I came across and why I chose to rank them in that order. My favorite thing about work ended up being the fact that a lot of my friends applied there and the people I met going there, and in fact, its location. I know a lot of people dislike work because it's in Coventry, but there are two advantages. First of all, it's quite cheap. Somebody I talked to who studied there said that they spent less than £4,000 each year on maintenance. Granted, this guy didn't go out much, but the fact that you're able to rent a room for less than 80 quid a week at less than half an hour from the campus is quite useful, especially if you want to have more spare cash. The other advantage is the fact that it's not that far from London. When you apply to graduate jobs or internships, there is a high chance that you will at least at some point interview in London. Being able to get to London in an hour by train becomes an advantage because the shorter trip means that you will be less tired when you get to the interview and you'll probably do better. Other things which convinced me to put it down which I liked were the high graduate salaries and apparently very good career fairs. Looking back, I think I was swayed too much by what other people said because in all honesty, the university isn't a brilliant fit for me. If I were to apply again, I would probably rather apply to two courses at one of the other four choices. Now, Bristol ended up having a lot more positives than people may seem to make it out to have. One of the things people kept mentioning was the posh slash snobby slash whatever students, but since it's a university with over 10,000 students, I don't think that's a reason to not choose a university because there will still be thousands of students who aren't like that who you can become friends with. I met plenty of friendly Bristol students both in real life at open days and on the internet. In fact, probably more so than other universities. And Bristol itself has got a lot of computer science related jobs. For example, Amazon and Nvidia have offices in the city. This becomes an advantage when you try to get an internship or a job when you graduate 
since a lot of companies prefer to recruit locally and it also makes getting a part-time job related to computer science while you're studying a possibility. Finally, one of the main pros is the year abroad they offer. At a lot of the universities I looked at, their year abroad in English was either really competitive to get into or just flat out non-existent. University of Bristol offers a lot of options for to do a year abroad in English. For example, Rice, University of Melbourne and Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. At one of the events I talked to a fourth year studying there, who talked about how the university negotiated for him to receive accommodation for, he, for his entire year abroad at HKUST for just £3,000, which if anything shows that the university puts an effort towards making the year abroad a viable option to everybody, including those with limited finances. That said, there are some cons. Bristol isn't exactly a cheap place to stay and the city is quite hilly, which can be annoying. And personally, I would have preferred a campus university, but taking everything into account, I probably would have applied, even if I didn't get a contextual offer. What initially was my fifth choice probably ended up being my favourite out of the three. The course is brilliant and the location probably couldn't be better. It's literally a five minute walk from Google and Facebook's campuses in London. The year abroad scheme has plenty of choice, although places for better universities to do a year abroad at generally get quite competitive. Something I quite liked was the fact of the fourth year was a research master's rather than a top one, which meant that your fourth year would be like a mini PhD for preparation if you wanted to do research long term. That said, if you didn't want to do that, there was still plenty of choice for a fourth year. When I was applying, you had a choice of 36 modules for six slots. There is, however, definitely an understaffing issue. When I went there for their open day, their slides showed that they had space for 120 students to start each year, but in fact, they took on more than 200 that year. And talking to former and current students, they confirmed that attention from professors was really something you can count on and you definitely had to do a lot of self-teaching. Being in central London, the cost of living is quite high, but in my opinion, it's worth it. I think if you're prepared to basically self-study the entire course, the university and course have a lot to offer, especially since it's a quite recognizable name all across the entire globe. For those wondering, my other two choices were Cambridge and Imperial. I personally would consider Imperial a close second to Cambridge, and UCL not far off, but work and Bristol don't seem in the same class in terms of workload and career opportunities. That's not to say that they're bad. If you want to have a more chill university experience, they're probably better in that regard. But if you look at what the graduates do after graduating on LinkedIn, there's definitely a difference between the paths that people who graduate from Cambridge Imperial UCL take and the other universities like Bristol and Warwick. For me, Bristol's year abroad almost makes up for that and you can check out my video on why you should do a year abroad to understand why I emphasize it so much. That wraps up this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below your choices and why you chose them. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and let's get this bread.